In this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about spectral decomposition of matrices and some of its extensions, and then in the homework you're going to actually prove all of these statements for yourself so that I don't have to sit here and do laborious proofs in a video that you don't really want to watch. So for consistent notation, remember that we've got A, which is some square matrix, we'll say n by n rows and columns, and it has n eigenvalues, lambda i through lambda n are its eigenvalues, and it has each eigenvalue has a corresponding right and left eigenvector. We usually call the right eigenvector u, which has got elements u1, u2, up to un, and its column vector. It's the right eigenvector. Yes, the right. And the left eigenvector we usually write as vt, v transpose, because the eigenvector itself would be a column vector, but we think of we represent vt as a row vector for reasons that have to do with multiplication rules. And it has elements v1, v2, up to vn. And before I forget, that should be ui and vti, because there's going to be an eigenvector for each eigenvalue from i to n. There are plenty of good reasons why spectral decomposition is called spectral decomposition, but I kind of prefer to think of it as eigenvalue decomposition, which will make sense in a second. So what matrix decomposition means is you're taking your matrix A and rewriting it as a sum in terms of its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Specifically, you can write A as a sum for all of its eigenvalues from I to N, remembering that A is an N by N matrix. So it's the sum of the eigenvalue I times the matrix that falls out when you multiply the right and left eigenvectors together and divide each term by the dot product of the same eigenvectors. And I'm totally getting lazy with the subscript, sorry, those should be i's. It may not be immediately obvious to you why this monstrosity is going to be a matrix. Just remember that the u the u eigenvector is a column vector and vt is a row vector. So if I multiply a column vector by a row vector, the end result is a matrix. So u1, u2, that eigenvector and this eigenvector. You end up filling in this matrix with u1 v1, u1 times v2, u1 times v3, all the way up to u1 times vn. And this goes down to un v1, and this one goes over to un vn. Right. So this product on top gives you a matrix, and each term inside that matrix is divided by this dot product, where if we do this multiplication the other way around, and we take a row vector v1, v2, da, 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 vn, and we multiply it by a column vector, u1, u2, un, we get a scalar, right, that's u1, v1, plus u2, v2, plus u3, v3, plus all the way up to un, vn. Right. So, So this bit is the matrix. It's a matrix, not the matrix. And this bit is a scalar.
So let's say in the simplest case, right, where if A is a 2 by 2 matrix, then the spectral decomposition of a 2 by 2 matrix, A is 2 by 2, it's going to be first eigenvalue times U1, U1T over Bt, Bt, this thing plus the second eigenvalue times another one of these matrices like that. So about this ugly matrix of eigenvector product rather than write this out all the time We're going to define this matrix to be PI. In algebra terms, PI is called a projection matrix, which is going to be confusing because in population biology we talk about projection matrices all the time, but we mean specifically population projection matrices, the population projection matrices, like Leslie matrices, that are model components that we use to predict to project population size into the next generation. These kinds of projection matrices have more to do with vector projection and algebra stuff. So just remember that P is, a, is an algebra projection matrix. Population projection matrices will tend to be called L or A or something else. Just remember that the matrix P is this eigenvector product matrix. So we can rewrite the spectral decomposition of A as the sum for all i, right, because a is n times n, of the eigenvalue i times this matrix pi. So that's my preferred expression for the eigenvalue decomposition. So now that we know we can rewrite a as a sum of eigenvalue and eigenvector products, A handy extension of this fact is that if we have some product of A, some A raised to some power n, right, which is A times A times A n times, if you actually do this multiplication really laboriously in terms of it being the sum of the eigenvalues of the PIs, What you end up with in the end is that a raised to some power n is the sum of lambda i raised to the n times pi. And that is the extension of the eigenvalue decomposition to matrix powers. And lastly, I'm just going to mention the extension to matrix exponentials, which is e raised to the power of some matrix A, which may not make sense to you right now, but just take my word for it for now, is the sum of e raised to the ith eigenvalue times pi for all i. And relatedly, if t is some scalar, e to the ta is going to be equal to the sum e to the t lambda i pi. And now in the homework, you're going to go through the proofs of this yourself. And then we're going to talk about how this applies to population biology in the next section.